Urshend Family Entertainment is a theme park company that operates four different amusement parks, most notably Silver Dollar City and Dollywood. Along with their two flagship parks, they also have recently acquired Kentucky Kingdom and Wild Adventures. They also operate a few water parks and additional attractions, but for the sake of this video, I want to focus on their theme parks, specifically their roller coaster collection. In this video, I will count down the chain's top 20 roller coasters. Four things to note before starting. One, I will not be including any coasters at Six Flags Darien Lake. Hershen briefly operated this park from 2012 to 2014, but I want this list to reflect their current park lineup. Two, I will include some honorable mentions for defunct coasters if I've ridden the ride at its new home, or an exact clone in another park. Three, I have not been to Wild Adventures. All their current coasters are clones, so I can give them honorable mentions based on my experiences on similar rides elsewhere. The only custom coaster in this park's history has been Cheetah. This CCI Out and Back Wood coaster sounded like a decent ride in its early years, but it supposedly became rough before its removal. 4. I have reviews published for almost every coaster in this list if you want more in-depth thoughts. Number 20. T3 at Kentucky Kingdom. Look, something had to get the bottom spot. This was one of the first Vacoma SLCs, and it was infamously rough. So rough that the park even mocked it online. But I found it better than several SLCs. This one had updated trains from Kumbach that eliminated headbanging. It still shuffled profusely, but I at least was not smacking my head, which is my main issue with this model. The layout is otherwise fast-paced with five thrilling inversions, most notably the back-to-back -back inline twists towards the end. While on the topic of SLCs, I have heard that Twisted Typhoon at Wild Adventures is one of the better SLCs, but I'm still skeptical because as those aforementioned over-the-shoulder restraints. Up next would likely be Boomerang at Wild Adventures or Vampire Kentucky Kingdom. I technically have ridden the latter, as its current home is now flashback at Six Flags New England. This compact looping coaster from Vacoma is an intense experience. It features three forceful inversions going both forwards and backwards. The Cobra Roll can be a bit choppy, but the inversions are super disorienting, particularly in reverse. But my favorite parts are the tummy tickling drops as you fall down the spikes. Up next would likely be Marsh Mayhem at Wild Adventures or Roadrunner Express at Kentucky Kingdom. The latter was also relocated to Six Flags New England, where it now runs as Gotham City Gauntlet. These are Mauer Wild Mice. The hairpin turns at the start have some strong laterals. Then the bunny hills in the second half can offer some pops of airtime if they aren't braked too severely. You just need to watch out for the brakes in this one. They can bash your knees from the abruptness. Up next is another honorable mention in Thunder Express at Dollywood. I've experienced this Arrow Mine train at Magic Springs, where it now runs as Big Bad John. This coaster had a scenic layout through the woods. Most of the layout was mild, but the final drop delivered a shockingly wild ejector moment in the back car. It caught me completely off guard. Back to the regular list. Number 19, Dragonflyer at Dollywood. This is an ultra-smooth Vacoma suspended coaster. The start has some surprising power to it. You have a fun drop into an underground tunnel and a very forceful overbank that feels like an inversion. Then you have some graceful turns and helixes offer a smidge of force. Number 18, Blazing Fury at Dollywood. This is a mostly dark ride past a burning town. The scenes are old school, and I do wish you moved through them a bit slower, but there is plenty to see for sure. But this ride makes the list because of the finale. You have three drops. The first one has some solid airtime in the back car. The final two don't offer the same negative Gs, but they still abruptly chuck you downwards. Number 17, Thunderation at Silver Dollar City. This is one of the most unique mine train coasters in the world. You start atop a hill and you rumble your way down. You pick up some serious speed by the helix and it continues to build for the low turns at the bottom. And the speed is only enhanced by the abundance of trees. Then you need to take a lift hill to get back up to the top. But unlike most that do this, Thunderation throws in one more drop, its biggest one no less, so you finish with a bang. 
The biggest flaw with this ride is the tracking. This Aero Mine Train is undeniably bumpy. Number 16, Thunder Run at Kentucky Kingdom. This is one of the better DIN coasters still remaining. This has a similar layout to the hurler coasters at the Cedar Fair Parks, just with better tracking and no trim brakes. The three bunny hills in the outward leg are simply fantastic. The first one offers a quick burst of ejector, then the next two offer nice sustained floater. The second half finishes with a whimper though. There's a lot of straight track. It didn't always used to be like this. If you watch a POV when this ride originally opened, it had some extra hills that looked like they would have offered sharp airtime. Number 15, Mystery Mine at Dollywood. This Gerslauer Eurofighter really should be higher. It's a very well themed coast with a memorable finale, but it is a very jerky experience. The first half has several directional changes where it's exceedingly easy to bash your head into the over the shoulder harness. You definitely want to lean forwards here to mitigate this. The odd part about this is that the first half is not too wild as it slowly meanders along a hill. But that aforementioned finale is fantastic. You have a beyond vertical drop in the dark with some powerful ejector airtime. Then you have a barrel roll and dive loop with phenomenal hang time. Why the most intense part of the ride is the smoothest is beyond me, but that's how it's always been with Mystery Mine. Up next would have been Grease Lightning at Kentucky Kingdom. This Schwarzkopf shuttle loop featured a weight drop launch at the start with solid acceleration. The rest of the layout was simple. You had a vertical loop loaded with positive G's, and then a large spike with some weightlessness, but it would cause you to repeat the layout backwards, which made that vertical loop even more disorienting. It is unfortunate this ride was not saved after the Six Flags days because it was an exciting experience. Up next is another honorable mention in Viking Voyage Wild Adventures. This Myler creation now runs as Hurricane at Fun Spot Kissimmee. Myler did not make many adult coasters, but the ones they built are quite janky. This rise some solid drops in bunny hills that give some sweet airtime. Then you have borderline hairpin turns, so you will get quick jolts of laterals as well. The rise not glossy smooth though, as the trains bang around the turns, and that low turn after the second drop is rather uncomfortable. But most of this ride is enjoyable. Number 14, Fire in the Hole at Silver Dollar City. This was a very similar ride to Blazing Fury, just with a much better finale. All three drops in this one offered airtime, and the negative Gs were even stronger in this one too. You sort of got boosted in each drop, so you'd get standing airtime in the first two plunges. Then this one still had a splashdown effect at the end as a bonus. The original version of this ride was retired after the 2023 season, and it is being replaced by a modern version from RMC in 2024. Number 13, Wildfire at Silver Dollar City. This is a Balsh or a Mabillard sit-down coast with a picturesque setting. You were at the edge of a wooded hill overlooking a valley. It is beautiful. The coaster itself starts strong too. The first drop has some wonderful floater airtime in the back row. It feels like a drop that's fit for a hyper coaster. Then you have five inversions. They aren't overly forceful though which keeps this coaster out of the top 10, but the ride is extremely smooth. Number 12, Big Bear Mountain at Dollywood. This Vacoma family launch coaster is the anchor attraction in Wildwood Grove. This coaster has three LIM launches, and the last two have some nice oomph to them. Then you have a dynamic layout carving its way over the terrain. There isn't much airtime, but there are a few moderately forceful valleys. The elements are fast paced, and this is a very long rod experience, and the onboard audio is a very nice touch as well. Now that terrain is pretty bare at this point, but it should fill in with trees in the future. Number 11, Fire Chaser Express at Dollywood. This Gerslauer creation is still my favorite family coaster at Dollywood. The ride has great terrain use like Big Bear Mountain, but even better forces. The first half has several spots of floater airtime. It is on the weaker side, but plentiful for a family coaster. You then have two launches, including a backwards one. They are tire driven, but they have rapid accelerations. Then that backwards bit is a cool finale with some snappy turns at the end. Up next would have been Chang at Kentucky Kingdom. This Balger and Mabillard stand-up coaster originally opened as the tallest, fastest, and longest ride type of its kind. 
While these records were passed and the ride has since been relocated to Six Flags Great Adventure's Green Lantern, it is still an intense coaster. The five inversions are powerful. The inclined loop in particular and the valleys try to slam you through the floor. This sensation is not for everyone though, as it makes your legs feel like jelly. And this coaster can be uncomfortable if you have the bike seat or over the shoulder harness too high. I've ridden this coaster enough to know where to comfortably place these, and I have a tip video how to do this. Number 10. Kentucky Flyer Kentucky Kingdom This is a small gravity group wood coaster, but it is jam-packed with airtime. Every hill will toss you from your seat, particularly if you're in the back row. The return leg features a quad down with some strong pops of airtime. I don't find the sense of speed or airtime quite as abrupt as some other gravity groups, but this is still a great little coaster. Number 9. Tennessee Tornado at Dollywood This was the last aero looping coaster, and it rides way differently than the others. For one, it is very smooth. All the transitions are fluid even after 25 years of operation. Two, the elements were not cookie cut. You have this ginormous and weirdly profiled loop at the start with some hang time. Then the iron butterfly later in the ride has great positive G's. But the best part has to be the 13 story first drop through the mountain. You get some excellent floater air time in near total darkness. The one con with this coaster is that it is over in a flash, but everything it does, it does well. Number 8. Wild Eagle at Dollywood This is one of the oddest b and wing coasters. It doesn't have the usual near misses or sequencing. The layout feels like it was meant for a floorless coaster, but I still really enjoy the ride. For one, it is located on a giant hill, so you get some wonderful views. Then the first drop is good floater airtime, similar to that of Wildfire. The four inversions are mostly good, the loop is nice force, then the zero G roll and corkscrew are super floaty, then the finale has two helixes that pull solid Gs. Number 7. Powder Keg at Silver Dollar City This is such a strange coaster, and those quirks make it memorable. SNS took an old premier water coaster and transformed it into a compressed air launch coaster. And that initial launch is quite powerful. It delivers a gut punch that magnetic launches cannot. Then the first three hills offer copious amounts of airtime, combined with stunning views. The end of the first half reuses the coaster section from Buzzsaw Falls, but you now have way more speed, so you get some great sustained laterals. The pacing is disrupted by a lift hill midway through, but the finale makes up for it. You have a large drop of some airtime, and then a fun, funky helix with an extra airtime pop. Number 6. Thunderhead at Dollywood This GCI wood coaster is a fast-paced frenzy. The turnaround sharply level off, so you get great pops of airtime, particularly in the front row. Then you also get popped out of your seat in the smaller hills as well. There was a time when this coaster had some noticeable jackhammering, but Dollywood has done a lot of track work in recent years that has this coaster running like a dream. It is running smooth and fast as of this recording. Number 5. Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom The prototype Chance Morgan Hyper GTX rides like an RMC coaster and I mean that as a compliment. While it doesn't have the most impressive stats, you have an exciting layout with some strong ejector airtime, most notably on that super steep first drop, the large camelback that immediately follows, and then the bunny hill finale. The latter comically launches riders skywards. It is one of the most intense airtime sequences on the planet. Number 4. Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City the prototype mock extreme spinning coaster is built on the same hill as Thunderation. But rather than easing its way down the hill, Time Traveler kicks things off with a vertical drop directly out of the station. You get some incredible ejector airtime in the back row, especially because you start spinning immediately. Now this spin is more like a slow rotation, but it causes you to take elements sideways or backwards, making them far more exciting. This also gives the experience a lot of re-ride value. The rest of the ride features three inversions and fun airtime hills. I particularly like the sequence in the middle with a big vertical loop, an extremely violent S-hill that wildly hucks your body, and a zero G-roll that feels like you're performing a backflip. 
and the two launches, while lacking on the acceleration, do enhance the spinning so they're still enjoyable. Number 3. Storm Chaser Kentucky Kingdom This RMC conversion of Twisted Twins is a punchy ride. The hills all deliver strong ejector airtime. The big camelback at the start is a wonderfully sustained moment in particular. Then the smaller hills towards the end are very abrupt, particularly the trick track double up. And then the ride also throws in two inversions. The barrel roll down drop lifts you from your seat, and then the zero G roll offers nice laterals instead of the usual float due to all the speed. Number 2. Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City The prototype RMC Wood Coaster is one of the fastest paced coasters out there. This ride hauls start to finish. The only time it slows down is during the double barrel roll finale when it's advantageous to do so to significantly enhance the hang time. The elements preceding that are memorable too. The first drop is one of the best out there with the intense ejector airtime. Then you have a series of smaller hills and sideways hills that also launch you from your seat. And this ride's use of terrain is elite. It takes place on a wooded hillside to augment the speed. Then the setting results in one of the world's best night rides. There is barely any light back there. The ride does have a rumble on a wheel seat, but I don't find it to be a major issue. I'm able to marathon this coaster with no issues, and I always do when I'm at this park. And coming in, number one is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. As of this recording, this is my favorite coaster anywhere. That's important to state because this coaster's uphill launch is being switched out with a high speed chain lift in 2024. That launch is solid positive G's, but it has been problematic. Then the ride only gets wilder as it goes on. You have a large near vertical drop at the start with some great airtime. This is followed by two large hills with super sustained sideways airtime. I love this type of airtime. Then the rest of the ride is filled with aggressive ejector airtime, most notably on the quad down. That is a magical sequence. Along with the individual elements, this ride is special for its wooded setting and blistering speed. It never slows down. I just appreciate all the work Dollywood has done to make this coaster more reliable. It is such a buzzkill arriving at this park only to find Lightning Rod down for the day. Hopefully that issue is a thing of the past. So those are the top 20 roller coasters of the Hershen theme parks. What are your favorite coasters in the chain? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.